Boys, you coming? You got your jackets? Don't play in those canoes, guys. They might break and fall off. Whoa! Jack, don't, Jack, don't climb on that canoe frame, buddy. You coming? Get your jackets. Jeez, like trying to get blood out of a bloody rock, getting these kids on the road. So we're going to the bush, guys. You'd think they'd be gear, boots, in the truck waiting for me. <laughs> it's the other way around. Finally, <laughs> we're away. Uh, we're just going to do a, a fire lighting video. <laughs> I realised I don't have a fire strike or a lighter. Can't do a fire lighting video without a fire strike or a lighter. Actually, could if we had some dry mahoe, but I don't have any of that either. So <laughs> we've got to go get a lighter. There you go, bro. Mate. Sorted. The deer's been walking up here last night. Pretty sweet, eh? Yeah. There, see it? Little deer print. One there. Yeah. One there. One over there. See another one? Yeah, one right there. Another one there. Look, I got a Chinese rock wall. Oh, yeah, sweet. So, what's going on today? Chaps, today, I'm going to show you fellas. Had a lot of fire in the wet bush. I've been all over the world lighting fires in bush and bloom in North America and South America and Central America and Northern Europe, over in England way, Japan, and by far and above New Zealand is the hardest place in the world to light a fire in the bush. It's extremely difficult. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques to make your fire lighting task easier and also a couple of woods to use. I'm going to start off in the uh, in the polo carp forest and then further down the track when I get up to the alpine environment I'll show you what woods to use up there. Oh, first and foremost what we want to find is some dead standing wood. Now that's easier said than done sometimes especially if it's the middle of winter and everything's freezing up because the ice tends to soak through into the wood and make the whole caboodle wet. But one really good wood for fire starting is supplejack dead supplejack vines they're always up off the ground there always be dry wood inside the dead supplejack so we're going to go try and find some of that and also for a uh, for a bit of kindling we can use punga fronds uh, that's actually a tree fern the way you can tell the difference between a tree fern and a punga is the tree fern has the skirt around it like this one here see it's got a skirt of dead branches the punga doesn't have a skirt Pungas are better because the punga will still have the leaves on it. Here's a, a tree fern leaf here. Now these will only work if it hasn't been pissing down for weeks on end. Um, if it's been pissing down for weeks on end, these aren't going to work too well. You, if you're lucky and you find a real thick, dense stand of punga, you might find a whole bunch of these that are kind of dry and get a fire going. Now paper bark doesn't really work too well. It looks like it'll be good. This is paper bark right here. It actually looks like really good fire lighting stuff but it's not all right we're gonna go find some supplejack and i'm gonna break some off Bit of supplejack. yep that's right the supplejack can't seem to find any dead ones let's just keep looking all right so these ones here are dead but they're a little bit rotten we want dead but we don't want rotten uh, there's a whole tangle of supplejack vines here it won't take long to to find a couple Jack's just found a, uh, a supplejack tip, you can eat them. No, yeah, but a deer ate it. Yep, a deer's already nibbled the top of it off. A deer mm -hmm. been up here feeding on supplejack mm -hmm. tips. This time of year too, when the care care uh, starts to sprout, they really love that stuff. Just before the grass starts growing, they hit the care care and the supplejack, then they move on to the grass. If we were a bit quieter and sneaking up here, we might have been able to sneak up on one. Another uh, another real good vine to use is dead rata vine. I'll be one who always find that. So uh, there's some over there, but it's right on top of the tree. Uh, dead rata works really good. Rata will actually burn still wet, still green. It won't burn well, but once you get a fire cranking, you can throw green rata on, and she'll huss it up. Uh, so this stuff here is just a little bit rotten. To get enough firewood to light a good cup of tea, boil a cup of tea. In a wee billy, you probably want to get enough firewood to fit under your arm. A bundle about yay thick. To get enough wood to last the night, you're going to need a stack 
about as long as you are tall, as wide as you are tall, and about waist height. That's a heap of wood. That's enough wood to burn all night, keep you warm all night. But we're not going to stay here all night. We're just going to light a little fire, and then we're going to go white baiting. I found a nice dead rata vine here that's come over in a storm. When this tree's fallen over, the rata vines come down with it. And there's going to be a heap of dry, dead bits of wood in this rata vine. So that's primo. The vine of choice actually would be rata, not supplejack, but you can't always find rata. It's growing near the ground, like this. So I'm just going to get a variety of rata, supplejack, some kamahi, and then we'll go back and chop it all in a kindling and get the fire hussing. As you're walking around looking for dead supplejack vine, keep an eye out for any kind of dead standing wood. Kamahi works really well. Dead bits of rata. Beach, beach is okay. But, uh, the problem with beach, it rots really quick. But if you can find a couple of kamahi branches sticking out the side of a live tree, uh, dead standing wood, they're going to be dry on the inside and you can use those as kindling. So I'm just going to keep walking around looking for dry standing wood. Righty ho, now that we've got a good sized pile of kindling, I'm going to get the knife and I'm going to start splitting some of this kindling. Now we've got a good pile of kindling, what we want to do is build a base for our fire. So this is quite important. Oh, there's some good dry bits. I'm going to put those down there. So we're going to build a bit of a base by just kind of building a flat log cabin. This is definitely the best way to build a fire. You don't want to build the fire from the bottom up. You want to build it from the top down if that makes sense. I'm going to get a good layer under here. Hold it Jack, I'll need that knife mate. Now the idea of this is that as the fire starts to burn, the bits of burning embers drop down into this layer here and then this layer sets alight and then you're away. If you light a fire direct on the wet ground, there's a lot of moisture in the ground that's going to start steaming and put your fire out. So this not only elevates it above the wet ground, it allows oxygen flow to come up under the fire too and really get it humming. It's alive. The roll. Yeah. This will give you a fair idea of how much wood you need to start a fire. That small pile I had has already run out. The fire's cranking now, but it's going to go out fairly soon. There's probably just enough wood there to boil a small billy. It's really key to get enough kindling and enough small dry wood to get that fire humming. Now I didn't use a fire lighter for that, I just used a lighter and the dead wood that was around me in the forest. Uh, everything's quite wet still, it's been raining for about three or four days non-stop so everything's really soaking in the forest and I still managed to get a fire going. Normally I'd take some rubber inner tube or some kind of other fire lighter with me in my pack in a dry bag or if I didn't have a backpack and I was just going hunting for the day I'd take it in a pocket or in a in a belt bag, in a waterproof bag, so if I did injure myself and I needed to hunker down for the night and wait for search and rescue, I could still light a fire. Now you can actually find enough dry wood within about 20 metres of your immediate area. You should be able to anyway. Look at the fire doing, it's blowing it. And you can see because I've made that pile of dry wood underneath it, the fire is still burning and it will just keep burning all the way down, right down into that pile of wood underneath. And you can make that pile of wood as big as you want. If you want to, you can make it two or three feet high, so it'll burn all night.